Congressmember Paul Ryan of Wisconsin formally accepted the Republican vice presidential nomination, promising a turnaround for America that includes better jobs, prospects, and less national debt. The Tea Party favorite is a seven-term Republican congressman, also chair of the House Budget Committee. On Wednesday, during a primetime keynote address at the Republican convention in Tampa, Ryan said he's ready to work with his running mate Mitt Romney to meet the challenges the nation faces. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, delegates and fellow citizens, I am honored by the support of this convention for Vice President of the United States. I accept the duty to help lead our nation out of a jobs crisis and back to prosperity. And I know we can do this. I accept the calling of my generation to give our children the America that was given to us with opportunity for the young and security for the old. And I know that we are ready. Our nominee is sure ready. His whole life, his whole life prepared him for this moment, to meet serious challenges in a serious way, without excuses and idle words. After four years of getting the runaround, America needs a turnaround, and the man for the job is Governor Mitt Romney. Vice presidential Republican nominee Paul Ryan received several standing ovations during his speech slamming President Obama on health care and the economy while promising to ease the nation's struggles by passing what he called tax fairness and regulatory reform. He also vowed to provide more job opportunities, protect Medicare, and solve the debt crisis. In one of the biggest applause lines of the night, Ryan took a jab at President Obama's record on jobs. The issue is not the economy that Barack Obama inherited, not the economy that he envisions, but this economy that we are living. <laughs> College graduates should not have to live out their 20s in their childhood bedrooms staring up at fading Obama posters and wondering when they can move out and get going with life. Everyone who feels stuck in the Obama economy is right to focus on the here and now. And I hope you understand this too. If you're feeling left out or passed by, you have not failed. Your leaders have failed you. Paul Ryan is expected to fire up the conservative base of the Republican Party. He's known for pushing a cons controversial budget and economic vision marked by deep cutbacks to the social safety net coupled with lower tax rates. Over the years, he's pushed for privatizing Social Security, dismantling Medicare, slashing funding for Medicaid. He's also proposed cutting food stamps for as many as 10 million Americans, cutting funds for programs like Meals on Wheels, and eliminating Pell Grants for more than a million students. On the tax front, Paul Ryan has proposed a plan to slash taxes for the wealthiest Americans while raising taxes on some of the poor. The New York Times reports by one statistical count, Ryan is the most conservative vice presidential nominee in more than 100 years. Falling on the far-right spectrum of his own Republican Party, Ryan opposes abortion in all situations, including cases of rape and incest. He also opposes abortion in cases that endanger 
a mother's health. Well, for more on Paul Ryan, we're joined now by two guests from the home state of Wisconsin, Paul Ryan's home state, that is. They're here reporting on the Republican National Convention in Tampa. Ruth Conniff is the political editor of the Progressive magazine. John Nichols is a political writer for The Nation, whose most recent article is They Love the Lies Paul Ryan Tells, also author of Uprising, How Wisconsin Renewed the Politics of Protest from Madison to Wall Street. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! The Lies. Um, you were on the floor of the uh, convention last night. Why do you say lies? Because, in fact, they were lies. I mean, it, it, I don't like to use the term lie. Uh, in fact, I write about politics a lot, and I'm very, very careful uh, not to throw it around because I think it's used too casually, and thus it, lo it loses some of its meaning. So I, I almost never put the word lie in a headline. Uh, but in this case, I was sitting there listening to the speech, and, you know, frankly, to be honest, I'll, say, I'll give you a, a good sort of inside way of saying it. I thought it would take me about an hour to finish out writing on this speech. It took several hours because I felt I had to go through each of the major uh, deceptions in the speech. And there were so many of them. You began with his hometown story, where he talked about the General Motors plant in Janesville. Now, I've been at that plant. I've been in the UAW hall uh, outside of it. I followed it, the struggle over its closure day by day. I know when it closed. It closed around Christmas in 2008, when George Bush was president of the United States. And yet, clearly, in his speech, Paul Ryan tried to suggest that it was President Obama or President Obama's policies that had something to do with the closure. And so that was the beginning point. And then, you know, we go step by step through his references to Obamacare, his references to Medicare, his references to austerity, or at least to the necessity of doing something because of debt. All of these things are rooted in deception. Let me go to um, Congressman Ryan attacking President um, Obama's plan last night. Uh, he, the handling of the debt crisis, saying he'd rejected Republicans' good faith efforts to curtail the problem. We're going to try to bring you that clip uh, right now. Well, why don't you talk about that? Yeah, I, you know, it's a very interesting thing because there was this, he was referencing the Simpson Bowles Commission. And this was chosen by President Obama uh, with the idea of trying to come up with some sort of plan. When it came down, President Obama did not fully embrace it, although, I, to my mind, he was a little more sympathetic to it than I would have liked. But the interesting thing is that Paul Ryan was a harsh critic of Simpson Bowles as well, saying it didn't go far enough. And so he creates this fantasy that somehow Simpson Bowles came along and we, had, we, had, we were on the verge of an agreement to settle things and that President Obama scuttled it. The truth of the matter is that Paul Ryan was at least as central to scuttling it, if not more, than the president. And so he, it's, he selectively uses facts throughout all these things. And the troubling thing to me is not that politicians do that. I'm afraid I'm a little too used to that. But what was troubling is these were things that have been called out by PolitiFact, by Fact Check. I mean, there have been major reports in the media saying that what he's saying is false. And he just got right up there at the Republican National Convention, stared right into that camera, and said it once more. In his speech, Paul Ryan illustrated economic failure under President Obama with an anecdote about a factory that closed, um, as you were just saying, John, uh, before Obama took office. But let's hear Paul Ryan say it. State voted for President Obama. When he talked about change, many people liked the sound of it, especially in Janesville, where we were about to lose a major factory. A lot of guys I went to high school with worked at that GM plant. Right there at that plant, candidate Obama said, I believe that if our government is there to support you, this plant will be here for another 100 years. That's what he said in 2008. Well, as it turned out, that plant didn't last another year. It is locked up and empty to this day. And that's how it is in so many towns where the recovery that was promised is nowhere in sight. John Nichols, Paul Ryan. Look, I, I know people who worked at that plant. I covered that story with great passion. It was, I write nationally, but that was one of the places where I brought the trade debate and the economic downturn out because of that plant. We wrote about it for the nation in detail. 
And, and Paul Ryan was the congressman from that district. When he talks about the government letting the people down, Paul Ryan went to Congress. He voted for free trade deal after free trade deal after free trade deal. He supported economic policies that encouraged the transference of jobs within the United States and then beyond the U.S. And here's the real tragedy of the moment. Had that plant stayed open into the spring of 2009, when President Obama was doing the, working on the auto bailout that Mitt Romney said they shouldn't do, uh, it is a chance it would have become a part of the negotiations, a part of the discussion, and maybe it would have survived. But the tragedy is it closed under the presidency of George W. Bush and having a congressman who was a key player in Congress, Paul Ryan, not beginning to do what a truly impassioned representative would do to try and defend the plant and the workers in his hometown. Ruth, I saw you there on the floor of the Republican convention last night as you were just finishing your interview with Scott Walker. Um, it was just before Paul Ryan took to the floor, his colleague from Wisconsin, Scott Walker, the governor of Wisconsin, uh, Paul Ryan, of course, uh, from Janesville, uh, head of the Budget Committee, now the Republican vice presidential nominee. Overall, what was your impression of the speech? Well, I watched the whole speech with the Wisconsin delegation, and I actually was right next to Tommy Thompson, the former governor of Wisconsin, now the Senate candidate, the Republican Senate candidate, and he was beside himself with joy. In fact, he was so thrilled with Paul Ryan's speech, like much of the Wisconsin delegation, that he leaned over, squeezed my arm, and said, he got to you, didn't he? He got to you. Even journalists have a heart, and if he got to you, then he got to America. So this idea that we were all laughing and crying with Paul Ryan that he summed up this whole theme of the Republican convention, I think was the overwhelming feeling from delegates. They loved him. They loved his confidence, his poise, and most of all, his ability to make this incredibly Orwellian argument, to emote, to connect with working class people like his constituents in his incredibly hard hit industrial district, and then to take that and sell policies that are absolutely devastating to these same people. And as John points out with the plant in Janesville closing, that was really one of the most breathtaking moments when he pivoted from you know his mom and his lovely family and the, the laughter and the tears to this plant closing where you know labor guys have been following Paul Ryan at each of his appearances in his home district to talk about his support for these free trade agreements that have hollowed out manufacturing, not just in the whole United States, but specifically in this district where Rock County has 50 54% loss of manufacturing jobs since 2000. You know, between 30 and 50% job loss in manufacturing in all of these towns, right in Ryan's home district. And not only did he support the trade policies that have destroyed these jobs, he opposed the extension of unemployment benefits for these same constituents. So it's really you have to admire the chutzpah of this guy to come up and go right to that issue. Wednesday night at the RNC, um, Democracy Now! caught up with Wisconsin uh, State Senator Alberta Darling, who was sitting with her state's delegation. She shared her memories of seven-term Wisconsin Congress member Paul Ryan. I met him in 1998, and he came back to Wisconsin, and he was talking to me about his experiences. And I said, how old are you, Paul? It seemed that he had such a vast experience. He was so articulate, and it seemed like he was a much older soul than he was at 27 at that time. And he just had such a broad experience. Jack Camp was his mentor. And he was very committed. His brother said that when they were kids, they went on a trip to Colorado, and Paul was Six, and when they climbed to the top of this peak, Paul just felt it out, God bless America. And I think that's who Paul is. He's a man of uh, three main priorities, uh, family, faith, and America. Ruth Conniff, your response. This is why people love Paul Ryan. You know, he is the smiling face of this incredibly brutal Darwinian set of policies that the Republicans are presenting to us. And the fact that he's a great guy, the fact that he can flip through graphs saying that uh, cutting taxes on the rich is going to bring back jobs and make America great again. And just his delivery, his relaxed demeanor and his humor, it's what people love about him. And it's really dangerous.
We're going to break and then come back to this discussion. We're joined by Ruth Conniff of the Progressive Magazine, which is based in Madison, Wisconsin. And we're joined as well by John Nichols, who is um, the, nation in, the nation reporter uh, who has uh, written extensively about the uprising last year right until, well, yesterday on the floor of the convention, talking about what he called the lies that Paul Ryan told in his primetime address. Stay with us.